Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Today, got my full face on except for eyeshadow. We are gonna do some eyeshadow looks today. I'm going to show you how I would build my perfect palette. So I get asked a lot whether you are brand new to Saints eyeshadows, where to get started, and then also the other side, like you have quite a few in your collection, but you need help. help knowing what colors you might need to add. So I thought the addition of this, you guys, after I got this bad boy, I was like, well, this is gonna be filled with creams. I'm gonna get the little little guy and do just eyeshadows because to me, this is the perfect amount so that I have options for the day to day. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I would pick and choose colors for my perfect daily eyeshadow palette to leave out on my vanity that's so beautiful and pretty. So that we never have to wear the same eyeshadow look two days in a row, right? So if you wanna check it out, Please keep watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for being here. All right, friends, let's get right on into it and talk eyeshadows. I wore no bracelet, so we can do some swatches. Um, but I feel like eyeshadows are one of those things I could talk all day on as always i feel like there are no rules when it comes to eyeshadow but there are definitely some tips and tricks that can help you with a better application um, better color choices and if your eyeshadow is just kind of not coming out right we can definitely tweak it and a lot of that comes down to first starting with color choices now i've done eyeshadow videos on the, in the past on eye color but I'll be honest, I feel like the best eyeshadows are ones that you are just drawn to. Most people, I say, are naturally kind of, once they start playing with eyeshadows, you are drawn to the ones that you look best in that might be the shades that make your eyes pop. But you don't necessarily have to stick to just those shades, okay? So, have fun with your eyeshadow, experiment, try new colors. I'm gonna kind of show you how you can get started and then grow your collection as you get more comfortable with color. You guys know I am a neutral girl through and through. I love my neutrals and I feel like every good eyeshadow collection starts with those neutral shades. So I'm gonna show you a few different palettes that I kind of built, if you will, that I think anyone could get started with. And I'd say for any eye color, start with those neutrals, okay? You can always then add one color into each of the categories as you want to start playing with color. My experience with working with clients, most people say, I love neutrals, or they might have a preference for purples or golds. And I feel like people are kind of split right down the middle whether they like purples, which means you're drawn to the cooler shades, or you like those golden browns and you really are drawn to warmth. Um, so I'm gonna show you a nice neutral palette and then one that leans more warm and more cool. Now don't be scared of warm and cool. Um, I've done videos on the in the past as well over that, and I will insert my graphic on which shadows are warm and which are cool which are neutral so that you can easily kind of look and go from there. Okay, so first of, all, first of all, if you are brand new to my channel, you have no idea probably what I'm talking about when I talk about eyeshadow categories, okay? So this is something just that I made up virtually so that I could better help my clients understand First of all, Saints eyeshadows, since the picture online are always very deceiving, swatches can be deceiving, all of those things. So that you better understand the, the color difference between some of our shadows, whether something might look darker online versus how it actually swatches. 
um, our shadows, some of them are a little bit deceiving. They don't look anything like the picture. So the categories are based on how dark they are and then also where it would make the best placement on the eye. Since obviously when it comes to eyeshadows, like I said, there are no rules, but for certain people, there are kind of some general rules we like to follow. Like if you have hooded eyes or mature eyes, you can't necessarily just take a light color and put it all over from lash line to brow. It is not flattering, right? So there are certain techniques we can use to kind of complement our eyes in the best way, um, to contour them out, to make them look larger, to make your eyes appear less hooded, less aged, all of those things. So my categories take all of that into consideration and that way I can tell you where to put each number on the eye as well. So not only will it help you kind of distinguish some of our eye shadows and help you pick and choose colors more easily, but it will also help you when putting together an eye look, okay? So first things first, the number one shade. And the number ones, and I kind of, I have all of the shadows in here besides ones that I've already picked out for my, what I would say my daily collection, okay? So they're all in here and they're all by category based on one, two, three, four, five, okay? Five categories, number one is the lightest, five is the darkest. Ones are those brighter, lighter than your skin tone are gonna highlight. We use those inner corner under the brow, okay? Two shades can be shimmery or matte and they are pretty much just a light shade, okay? Usually we like to put these all over the lid. Now, obviously all these categories can be a little bit subjective depending on your skin tone. So if you're darker, some of these might be too light on you and you might have to say brighten with a two shade instead of a one shade and vice versa. Does that make sense? But in relation to each other, you'll be able to tell which colors are lighter and darker. Um, three shades are just a little bit more in the medium category. Usually shimmers you can put on the lid. There are some that can be multiple categories. I'll link the video in detail about categories down below if you really wanna see it. But some colors can be worn lighter or darker uh, depending on how they're built up. So again, just like lip and cheek colors, eyeshadows, if you put them on sheerly, they can look one way. If you really load up the color on the brush or use an eyeshadow primer and pack on the pigment, they can look very different. So some are what I call a three, five shade, meaning it can be worn lightly or dark depending on application, okay? Four shades are the only ones that are only matte. And I do this so that you guys are aware and really know which are those great shades for the crease because I have mature and hooded eyes and it is not pretty to try to put something super shimmery in this region. You're just gonna increase the look of texture on your eye and it's gonna make you not wanna use eyeshadows if you're having issues with shimmers pulling your eyelids, looking, making them look dry or crepey or anything like that. I am a strong believer that even with mature eyelids like me, like mine, you can still have fun and play with shimmery shadows. It's all in placement, placement, placement. And yes, there are some that are better choices than others when it comes to St. Eyeshadows as well. Check out my mature eye video. That one I kind of explain which ones are which. And then last but not least are those five shades. These are the deep dark shades that we tend to use as liner or in this outer corner. They create a lot of depth on the eye, okay? So those are the five categories in a nutshell. And that is how I like to arrange my palette. When I am helping a customer pick out eyeshadows, I'll be honest, nine, no, I don't wanna say nine times out of 10, at least 50% of the time, people are drawn to all of these pretty shimmers in the middle, okay? Now, if you have all these beautiful light shimmers, in my opinion, you're not gonna be able to do an entire eye look. You will be able to put some shimmer across your lid, but it's not going to do much for your eye in, in actually enhancing your eye 
you're usually most people, I'll be honest, most people have some degree of hooded eye, which if you don't know, hooded eye just means you can't see your entire lid when your eyes are open. Okay. Most people have some degree. It is very rare for someone to be able to see your entire eyelid when your eyes are open. Okay. So most of the time, if you just take a shimmer all over the lid, you're not gonna be able to see it unless you're looking down or you're blinking, right? It doesn't do anything for your eye shape. It doesn't do anything for your eye color. You can't see it. Okay. And it, it doesn't contour out your eyes or give them dimension or anything like that. It just gives a little bit of sheen as you're blinking, okay? We, we want to make sure you have the colors in your palette that you can do any eye look imaginable and switch it up on the daily so you can have fun with your eyeshadows. I feel like eyeshadows and lip and cheeks from Saint are what got me out of my rut of makeup. I wore the same blush and the same color eyeshadow for years until I discovered Saints makeup and realized what was I doing? I was not having fun. I was not enjoying putting my makeup on every day. It was a chore and now I enjoy it and I enjoy it because I'm experimenting and trying new things and making the outcome because it's, it's beautiful, right? So let's have fun with our eyeshadows and give you a complete palette so that you're not stuck in a one dimensional look. Okay, so just a caveat in there because I usually always do all of my monthly giveaways over on Instagram, but this video over on YouTube, this video alone, I'm gonna also allow you guys to enter from YouTube, okay? So if you don't know, on Instagram, go follow me over there. I do a big monthly giveaway every month and it's just for liking, commenting, sharing my posts. So we're gonna do comments here on YouTube in order to win this month's giveaway, which is either this size, which is what I'm gonna show you today, or the big kahuna. So this size with any eyeshadow brush or this one that holds 49 eyeshadows, which is if you already have a good collection started, this is definitely gonna give you room to grow. Um, with, did I do 10? I think 10 eyeshadows from Saint of your choice. So to me, 10 is a good number because it really will get you started. So I'm gonna kinda show you the getting started and then I'm gonna show you how I would build and grow from there once we've got you started with eyeshadows. So with 10 eyeshadows, it's very simple. I would say two from each of the five categories and make one of those shades neutral, okay? That is, that's it. Very simple, but you would be able to mix and match and do a variety of looks. So I'm gonna kind of show you the looks as we build our palette. tell everyone, make sure you're just starting with some good neutrals in your collection so that way you can easily add in color and have fun with it, but you can't do an all colorful eyeshadow if you have all just bright, fun colors and no neutrals to kind of ground those colors, you're not gonna be able to do a complete look. So make sure you have those neutrals. My favorite neutrals. Okay, let's go through every category of our shades and I will kind of swatch them as we build our collection. Number one shade, lighter than your skin tone, something that's going to brighten where you put it. Now, I like to wear this every single day, inner corner and under my brow, but you can also throw it on the lid or just concentrate it in this inner corner to open and brighten your eye. So my very favorite of all time would definitely be Sabrina. I've worn this for years and this works on everyone's skin tone, okay? Do you see how it catches the light? And it's a nice cream, which means it will look really natural on skin tone. Now, right? we recently got Drift. Drift to me is almost identical, to be honest. I do feel like it brightens more so. I don't know if you can tell. Because again, depends on the swatch, right? So they're very similar. I believe if you have one, you do not need both. It's just my opinion. I don't think you need both Drift and Sabrina. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop 
Sabrina in my pack. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you have mature skin and you're like, I don't like shimmers, this area and this area will not increase the look of texture, I promise. But if you want to maybe ease your way into shimmers, I would recommend Rome. Do you see how it's a lot less shimmery? Okay, Rome is like slightly darker and still catches that light, but is not going to increase the look of texture whatsoever. Okay, or there is Cupcake. Cupcake looks like vanilla dust. It's just not translucent. So it's like our setting powder. It will not, whoop, that is literally right over Rome. See, you guys, I couldn't even see it. It will not catch light, but it is lighter than most skin tones so that you will still, it will still brighten areas, okay? I would say if you're super scared of shimmer, you could go with that. But honestly, I would say try Rome. I, I bet you're gonna like Rome, okay? Now, my other favorites would be, um, I, you're probably saying, Sarah, those are all warm undertones. And yes, they are, because they are cream. Uh, the only one I would probably really recommend for most people would be Unicorn. Unicorn is a more white undertoned, kind of more silvery. Um, it's a cool shimmer. Now, this one is a lot more shimmery. I don't know if it's because it just stands out more and I have more warm undertone skin. So to me, this one does not look natural. Um, again, it would be based on your preferences and your skin tone. And if you are very cool, you might prefer Unicorn. It's also brighter, if you can tell, in comparison to Sabrina. If you look at the palettes I've built, there are two of my very favorite are not neutral, I would say. Um, my, I'd say my very favorite, I guess it's technically a little bit warm, but I feel like it's more towards the cool pink would be Soulmate. Soulmate is very shimmery. Okay. You can kind of tell how it's a little bit pink undertone, but it is when I want a pop of brightness, I go with Soulmate. For a warm shade, I would go with Blondie. Now Blondie is straight up gold, but again, do you see how much light that catches? Okay, so when I do use Blondie, I use it very sparingly. A little goes a long way with shades like this, um, but it gives a really beautiful pop. I'd say the darker your skin tone, the more you'll be able to pull off a shade like this. And also, don't forget about our illuminators, okay? So any cream will be very natural looking and you can use it multi-purpose and just pop it in the inside corner and under the brow and you'd be good to go. You don't necessarily need a separate eyeshadow for that. If it's cream, I don't recommend putting it on the eye because you're gonna be a lot more likely to have creasing with the cream-based ones. Now, the powder illuminators we have, they double as eyeshadows really well. Um, and they make a highlight shade extremely well. So Goldie is actually very similar to Blondie. Um, Soulmate, I think Photoshop is maybe a little bit darker. Georgia is one of my all-time favorites. Glamazing is more like Unicorn. It's that more brighter white. And then Starlet is more iridescent. Think unicorn vibes, okay? Those all work just as well, especially for a highlight. You can use them on the lid as well, but they're gonna be very bright and they're gonna look more like this. So our powder illuminators are much more of that blinding, wet looking highlight. So they do work really well for the number one category, which is the highlight shade. So for my palette, I'm just going to put one and I'll explain what I'm gonna use that other shadow for, that placeholder, if you will. If I was if I was starting from ground zero and I won the giveaway and I got to pick 10, I would pick one highlight. Um, I wear the same highlight 99% of the time. I would wear Drift because I don't feel the need to have a different 
inner corner under brow shade. I like it to look natural, but that's just my personal preference. So you could totally have fun with some of these shades, use them more on the lid. I tend to not, since I do have a lot of texture on my eyes, I try to focus them in those areas. Okay, number two. So the number two shade is just a light shade. This shade probably will not be anywhere else on your eye except for on the lid. Some can also be used as the brightener depending on how um, shimmery they are. Some of them catch light really well, some of them don't at all and are too colorful to really look natural in that inner corner, but some can. So you'll see on my category, some are hyphenated. I mean, one, two means it could possibly, when applied in a certain way, be used as a one shade as well. So when you are really trying to pick out colors for your palette, having those hyphen shades will actually give you more versatility because you can use them a number of ways and not just one way. Does that make sense? So there are a lot of shades in this category, I would say. I have more over here in my palette. But if it was me, I would pick the most useful, the ones you're gonna get the most bang for your buck, right? So for me, that would be um, a neutral light shimmer. The ones I have in mine first. So. One of my go-tos, and you might not think this is neutral, but one of my go-tos for anyone is Peppa, okay? Peppa is a little pink, but when it's on the eye, it really, I feel like it does not pull pink. It is very subtle shimmer, so it's really great for mature eyes. A little bit more shimmery is going to be Venus, and it's got more of a cool undertone. You can tell it looks kind of more purple, um, it's really pretty. I would say these two are more in the warm and cool category. My neutral pick would probably be Riviera, okay? This one is just straight up kind of taupey gold. Not too shimmery, but definitely reflects light. So for me, I would pick Riviera as my nice neutral. So some others that you might have seen and be interested about one of them is Angel's Landing. Everyone is attracted to this color and it is very beautiful. I will be honest, I don't wear this very often. It's probably, it's very similar to Aries, which I didn't show as a highlight because again, I can't wear these very easily. And if you have mature eyes, you probably won't be able to as easily either. If you swatch them, you can tell how do you see how chunky? These are not glitters. I classify these in between shimmers and glitters. These are even more glittery than what I used to call foiled, which are just our more shimmery shades. The biggest issue I feel like with our eyeshadows is that, like look at that, I barely touched it. Do you see how it's more like chunks and not finely milled, okay? Finally milled is gonna go on smoother. It's gonna show less texture on the skin. It's gonna reflect less light. Reflection is what shows texture, right? So these are beautiful, but hard to wear. Okay, do you see how, like, it's, it's so hard to tell on camera. And that's also what's hard to tell about our website. I feel like there is a big difference in between Shades like Rome, which I don't even know if you can see here. Rome is a shimmer, matte. These are all shimmers. They're all classified as either matte or shimmer, but there are definitely different degrees of shimmers within our eyeshadow line, okay? So just know that um, because they're not all equal. And then obviously there's mattes as well within this kind of light category. This one's Paris. Um, again, this is too light to really add any definition. Um, you'll see sometimes I use this just for a little bit of color way up here on the brow bone, but for the most part, it's a lid shade um, because you can't use this as just a crease color. It's not going to add depth and contour to the eye because it's 
lighter than a natural shadow. Does that make sense? So these are great for lid, for a lid color, a pop of color on the lid. Um, I'd say the two category, usually that is the only place you're gonna be able to use. So my favorite twos are ones that are very useful because I always call this my magic eraser shade. So if you're new here, you might not know, my Magic Eraser shade is a shade that's closest to my natural eyelid color, <laughs> um, once I've color corrected it at least. So that way I can either throw it all over the lid as a nice base, nice, sometimes I just do this and run out the door and kind of just brighten. This is Chai, this one is my fave. Um, I also use this to clean up mistakes. So you can also use just a setting powder, but since this one has more pigment, it's not translucent, it's going to help blur out and blend out a harsh color so much easier. So a lot of times if I get too far in here, I will use this to clean up my eyeshadow, okay? Same thing with outer corner. You can, if you can find one that's close to your lid color, it's really good as just to have in your arsenal. You will use it so much, you'll be surprised. So mine is Chai. Okay, it is just, it is the probably the most neutral, uh, a touch warm. The other one that is very similar is Pop. This is what I used before we had Chai. And it is just a little bit more cool, I would say, in comparison to try, can you see that? This one's a little bit more warm, this one's a little bit more cool. And then even warmer than chai would be Stay Golden. And I feel like, you see how this one's a little bit lighter. These three are probably your best bet. Now, if you have darker skin tone than me, those will not work for you if your skin tone is darker. So you might be able to go, we don't have a lot of neutrals in the three category. Most of them are more colorful. So maybe, what is that, butterscotch? Maybe butterscotch, depending on your skin tone. I would say even some people go up to the four category and can use Bubba or Basic in the same way. So again, just depends on your skin tone. If you're darker, you need to think a little bit darker in the categories than me, right? So, so far I've got Sabrina, Riviera, and Chai. And you might be like, that looks so boring, Sarah. Those are so neutral. Okay, I promise we'll get there. I would say start with neutral basics. Oh, so we're getting to the fun stuff. Okay, number three. Very much, very similar to the twos, just one step darker. So these are threes. Um, I really don't, I mean, I put the glitters in categories, but for the most part, glitters are like their own category, right? So I would say most of these are just nice shimmers um, that you can wear on the lid. They're that kind of mid-tone shimmery shade. So for this one, again, I would pick one neutral and I mean you could pick two neutrals but one neutral and then one maybe warmer or cooler for a little bit of versatility okay so my favorite neutrals would be stardust I'd say of all the shadows a lot of people start with this shade it's very wearable and I beg to differ if this does not go with absolutely every other shade we make <laughs> Because it's taupe. It's a beautiful shimmery taupe. It's not gold. It's not silver. It's just beautiful. It looks good on everybody. So Stardust. Where's my last swatch? You see that? It's beautiful. It's not too shimmery. Not too foiled. It's just a beautiful color. So Stardust, I would say one of my top recommendations of all time. Uh, the other one would be either hot chocolate or foxy okay these are both just kind of more in the brown neutral family i would i mean can you tell how similar they are 
Um, let's see, I'm running out of arm space. So here's Foxy. Okay. I mean, this one look really pretty with my shirt. Just a beautiful, I'd say medium brown. Okay, and then hot chocolate is one of our newer ones. I mean, it's, I mean, if I had to really compare, this one has a bit more purple in it. Can you see that? It's a touch darker. I, they're both beautiful, and when you have them on, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. I would say you don't necessarily need both. You could just pick one of these and be good to go. Okay, so let's sh let me show you like a warm neutral and a cool neutral. I feel like this category is where most of our fun shades that people are attracted to, um, at least in my opinion. So here's more of a warm neutral. This is um, You Complete Me. Do you see how it's just a little bit warmer? It's not really brown, but it's just got a little bit more warmth to it. It's one of my faves. So pretty, okay? And then Cranberry, which is more like an actual cranberry color. I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but when compared, it's very similar, even warmer. See how pretty that is though, okay? This is borderline like five. I might have categorized this as a three five, meaning you can wear it lighter on the lid, but you could build that up. Can you see that that's got more color to it? Those are warm because they're more, have more red in them. Now, when you go the opposite direction and go to more cool shades, um, a lot of people really love these two. So this is Bend and Snap. Purples are more cool. So if you like purple tones, I mean, I like to mix warmth and cool, to be honest. But um, if you like, if you don't like warmth on yourself, certain people just don't like warmth. Um, Bend and Snap or Gigi. Also two that I don't necessarily think you need both of because they're so similar. Especially, it just depends on how much you apply because this one's just a touch darker. Do you see that? So, Ben and Snap, Gigi's just a touch darker. They are very similar, okay? So, this is why I do these videos so you can save your money. If you have one, you don't need two that look virtually the same on. Uh, it is time for me to get out of white. This is also why I feel like it's good to know the undertone, the depth, the darkness, because when you're putting together an eye look, if you have two shades and you're trying to wear them together, they're too similar, they're too close to the same undertone, it's not gonna give you very much dimension on your face. So even like this was Venus, okay? kind of just like a light purple. And then next to one of these, it can sometimes give you no dimension. Even though they look really pretty next to each other, sometimes it doesn't translate on the eye because you're all cool. You don't have any kind of shadow or I don't know how else to call it, contrast in between the two. Like they, they almost look like one color when you're done. So that's why when I build a palette this way, I try to make sure I've just got one neutral so then I can always use that neutral with say the purple shade or neutral with the warm shade and really be able to build an eye look that will always look good together, okay? So my three faves of my color is that's in my compact, I will show you. I mean, in mine, I've got enough to have four of this. So when you're eventually growing your compact, I would say, well, I'll show you that, I'll show you this at the end of what I would do a complete compact in. Okay, my two of my favorites of all time, Crush. Don't be scared, even though it looks orange, it is just a nice warm neutral. Looks amazing on blue eyes, but it is my favorite and I have nowhere close to blue eyes. So I would say I would pick Crush or Tawanda. 
Wanda looks very pink. It is my shade that when you just swipe it on, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Maybe I can lightly swatch it. When you lightly swatch it, it looks more like rose gold. Do you see that? All you see is this shimmer. You don't see straight up pink. Now, if you wanna apply it pink, you just wear it heavily and then it wears pink. So the one that actually they describe as rose gold is this one that is very chunky, Angel's Landing. I can't wear that shade, but I can wear Tawanda lightly over the lid and put a rose gold shimmer over any other shade. So that one is always in my compact. It is, I, I use it as almost like a topper shade, similar to uh, a glowy gloss, like on my lip and cheeks. And then my very favorite of all time for my hazel eyes to make my eyes look more gold is bright eyes. Now, I get some people that say this looks yellow on them. In comparison to something like Gold Digger, it actually looks very brown. <laughs> but then you put it next to something like Foxy or Hot Chocolate and it looks very gold. So it's all relative, right? This one is my fave. I love this. It pops on me. Now, if you compare it to these browns, it does look more gold, but to me, it's kind of in between. It's not straight up gold. It's more of a golden brown and it's one of my faves. So I could put that in my palette and it would be very neutral. I would say if I had to pick a, a shade to wear every day for the rest of my life, it'd probably be <sighs> Crush. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Stardust and Crush for those okay, two. So we got one, two, three, four. Four is very easy for me personally because fours are always um, your mid-tone matte, which threes, again, can be, are, I don't even know if I said, threes are mostly just lid colors. They're shimmers. We got to keep those out of the crease to not show texture. And they're, most of them are too light to really kind of use as a brightener on the inside corner like ones and twos can. So threes are usually all over the lid. Okay. Fours are where we add contour to our eyes. Fours are always matte, so we can keep these in the crease. We bring them up a little bit over the crease, and those are the col colors that you're actually gonna see when your eyes are open, okay? So a lot of times I'll use some of these maybe more colorful threes up above my four, but I always use a four to create the contour of my eye. To me, when I started contouring out my eyes with a matte in this way, it took my eyeshadow game to the next level because I was just throwing a pretty shade all over my lid and calling it a day, but it never gave me a complete eye look until I figured out it's because even if I don't want to wear very little eyeshadow that day, this is the one color I don't skip, okay? So if I just want to wear one shade, it might not be the funnest shade, but it's gonna be my contour shade. It's going to be my four, all right? So my ride or die four is always, and will forever be, Bubba. I love this shade so much. So fours are something darker than your skin tone that is enough to create shadow and dimension. Now I love Bubba because it's, I can be generous and I can just, throw it in the crease. It's not so dark that on me, I mean, this is on my skin tone, that it is hard to blend so that I can really throw it on in two seconds, okay? And so I just am pulling this in my crease up above my hood and adding that contour to my eye. Do you see the difference? what a little bit of depth can do. Now, I like Bubba because it's warm. I love warm tones on myself personally, but I do the same thing with Bubba's best friend, Basic, okay? Bubba's warm, Basic's cool. So one of these, always in your palette. 
I like to have both in my palette or at least have another cool shade that is a matte that I can also use. So you'll see in the category, some are four or five, meaning you wear them lightly, you can totally put them in your crease. You build up the color, you can use them in your outer corner. So one of my favorites is Oak. It looks a lot darker on camera, but Oak is just a little bit darker and like basic, but I can wear it in the same way. And then Sedona is like, Bubba's version, a little bit darker, uh, also warm, and I wear that one in the same way, okay? So I recommend having one warm and one cool, and that can be a four and a five or have both in just your fours. It doesn't matter. Your fours are always matte. So whether you want to have fun and add a color, um, you totally can but I always try to think of what do what will pair with everything because if I wanna have my fun shades as my shimmer shades and those can be my pop of color on the lid, then I need to have some neutrals to have in my crease that will go with anything I pick. So that is a neutral, slightly cool, neutral, slightly warm, so that way I can adjust any shades as needed if it needs a little bit of coolness. If I need to cool something down or if I need to warm it up, I will always have those options in my palette and I can always make my eye look look complete. Does that make sense? So for my personal stash, I have Bubba and then I have Oak as my four five, okay? You can tell these two have big holes in them because I use them with anything. They look good with anything, I promise. Now, some people are anti-warm, okay? So if you're anti-warm and you wanna stick with cool, um, I'm running out of arms. Let's see if I can swatch over here. I suck at swatching with my other hand. Um, okay, so this is basic. Let me swatch Bubba. See, I can't, I almost have to like use my, this hand to swirl. It's like my left hand will not work, okay? Basic Bubba. Here is a great neutral, but not super cool. This one is Bird. It is an olive undertone. So if you like the color Henna for your contour, you might like this color. It's kind of like an olivey green undertone. Again, this one looks really good with everything. Um, it is more cool than warm though, but it's it's probably, but it is one of our most neutral four shades we have. And then some of our more popular ones that are not super neutral, this is Lullaby. Lullaby is gorgeous. It will make green eyes really pop, um, especially because this color you're gonna see, but it is like a mauve, okay? So it is cool. You see that? It is really beautiful, and if you think this is too purple maybe for you, then I'd say try Cafe. To me, Cafe is right in between basic and lullaby. It is very neutral, but has a titch of purple undertone making it cool. Do you see that? I mean, here it looks. <sighs> so this is basic. Cafe Lullaby. Do you see how it's a little bit more purple than basic, but not as purple as Lullaby, okay? So those are my favorite cool undertoned fours. Um, now I love me a warm, and I like to use these often. So I'd say, I'd say some of these are a little bit lighter. So Havana, I wear a lot, but it does not give me enough depth I can use butterscotch. I think I have this in the wrong place in my palette because I just used it. Butterscotch is like a darker version of Bubba, okay? And then if you wanna go even more warm, we even have oranges. I know those are scary for some people, but one of my all-time favorites is Zion, and it's more of a warmer 
And I would say a lot of people wear this in lullaby. So you're either drawn to warmth, go Zion. If you're drawn to cool, try lullaby. Those will definitely give you some versatility. So if you pick, um, say, a warm one, say I pick Bubba, then I could totally pick something like lullaby or cafe and have something a little bit more cool that's not quite so just basic neutral, right? Like basic. But I could totally just swap that out for lullaby and give myself a little bit more color as well in my palette. And these look amazing together. Don't be scared of using warm and cool shades together are honestly my favorite of all time. My, my favorite looks always have cool shades mixed with warm. I feel like it gives the most balance. So those are some of our, um, my favorite four shades. So I'd say pick two, one being neutral. Okay. So I like to have Bubba or basic depending on whatever. So since I picked Bubba here, I will pick Oak as my four five here. So I have cool, I have cool with some color, but now I have cool neutral and I can totally use these together and kind of help balance when needed. Okay. Um, for your four five shade or for five shades, five shades can also be, some have shimmer. Now shimmers in a shade with a lot of depth and darkness do not show texture like light shades do. Okay, so I just wanna be clear. The reason why you can still put a dark shade out here, I don't recommend it all the way up here where we have the most texture on our eyes, but I can put a little bit in the outer corner even though I have a lot of texture there and it doesn't increase the look of texture on my eyes because darkness absorbs light, it doesn't reflect light. So, whereas this will show all the texture, this will not, okay? There's a difference between that light reflection particle. It's just like highlighting and contouring. It's why we place contour where we do and the brightener shade where we do as well, okay? So, that five shade is what's gonna give you depth. We put our four shade here to carve out the eye. I I also use it along the lash line, so I would say if you want a fun liner, you can do green, dark blue, something with a little bit more shimmer, anything in this category. The, they're all super fun, but then we'll also create depth, okay? It's dark enough that you can use it as a liner or that outer corner to be able to kind of like pull your eye out, make it look larger, all of those things. So my favorites are, let's see, I haven't swatched any. Oak is my favorite um, for creating a lot of depth because this is, to me, the most natural looking shadow in a shadow form, right? So an actual shadow on your eye. Um, like we contour our face, we use cool, undertone contour colors are gonna give the most natural looking shadows to our face. Same thing goes with eyeshadow. So if we're wanting to actually carve out and really make our eyes look more contoured, use a gray, a more cool toned is gonna actually give you more of that natural shadow look, right? So I love Oak, my probably my favorite shadow of all time right now that we currently have, it's still pretty new to me, is Sedona. So this is just like, like I said before, it is, it isn't as warm as something like Zion. Um, it's not cool though, but it's much darker than Bubba. I wear this all the time in my crease. I have to use much less of it to get um, my eye carved out than in comparison to Bubba, but it does mean I have to be a little bit more careful with blending. But I love this color because it goes, it looks good with everything. It totally does. Now, here is a shimmer, one of my favorites of all time. This and Stardust, I used to always just recommend everyone start with. This is Finn. It is so beautiful. It's like just that 
dark bronzy color. Um, so Finn really gives that depth and dimension to the outer corner, but it does give a little bit of shimmer and you can kind of wear it lightly and really kind of create like a nice bronzy eye with it even just kind of smoked out along the lash line. I do that a lot. So Finn is one of my favorite of all time, darker colors. And then actual color color, I would say this. I used to always use Ken, which is what I just showed you with the, which is the dark shimmery color. I would pick Revival. And if you guys have seen my tutorials, you know I love this shade. Very dark and deep, but it's like a deep plum. It gives a lot of depth and I use it as a liner all the time because it just is something different other than brown or black or gray. And it gives a little bit of color, but it still gives a lot of depth. And I love a colored liner, but if it's not dark enough to really make my lash line look thicker, then I have to use a black liner with it as well. And then this just does it all in one. And it looks beautiful with, again, all these nice warm tones that I really like. It looks gorgeous with those. So if I was picking another shade, I would probably pick either Revival, which I feel like eh, it might be a little bit too close to Lullaby since I picked that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick something fun like Finn because that would give me the ability to kind of smoke out my lash line, use it in the outer corner, and this will look good with everything else I pick, okay? So sometimes when it comes to picking shades, I literally will pull one out and I'll be like, will this go with everything? So because I have so many neutrals, this will go with virtually everything. Honestly, the only one I would maybe not do it with, which I have worn it before with, would be Bubba. Sometimes because see how those are both warm and kind of very close to each other depth wise. Like this is a three, this is a four. Um, sometimes if you do that, it almost gets lost. Like I said, will look like one color. You would almost now, I could wear them together, but I would probably put another shade that's darker that would add more contour with it so that these two don't end up looking like one shade. I would pull some of this into my actual crease, the most shadowed part. I'd pull this up high over the brow bone and then I could use this in the outer corner and right here. It's gonna separate those, it's gonna create dimension and these aren't gonna look like one color anymore. That's how I would wear them together. So having something cool like this that you can pair with anything, having something warm where if you're doing a look with just all cool shades and it's looking too cool where you're like, I need to add some warmth, you can easily add it. Okay, so this is why I say a good mix of warm and cool is key. Having at least a couple of colors in there, but if you have a majority neutral, you will be able to always have those options in pairing them. And when you are doing an eye look and it's not coming out right, you will have a color that you can use to adjust it. I am always doing an eye look and I'd be like, yeah, I don't like that, I need something here. And I grab warm or cool, depending on what I think would, would help, that's all I do. It's nothing fancy. It literally is just kind of, learning how to create a balanced look, not like picking out three or four purple eyeshadows, um, but creating a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension, a little bit of balance, and you will be good. Now, this one right here that I left open, I would use as my brow color. I am a sucker for having it all in one compact. I love eyeshadows for my brows, so I use Trust for my brows. So I would use my brow color, or if you don't fill in your brows, um, Black Friday eyeliner, something like that. That is what I would create my 10 with. Okay, so I showed you swatches of most of them <laughs> that I put in the palettes I created for you guys, but I'm gonna show you what I would do. I'm running out of time and I wanted to show you guys an eye look. So I'm gonna show you what I would, this is my personal, 
palette with the new aisle palette because I'm obsessed with it that is going to just be my daily eyeshadows okay and I did put the shadow switcher in here because I forgot yes that is a necessity for me to wipe off my brushes in between colors I use it non-stop so I had to include it so like I said before I don't feel like you necessarily need four of those highlight shades number one shades so it fits right here um and I just gave myself a couple options so I wanted to show you guys drift for my neutral everyday brightener go with anything soulmate if I want more of a pop um something fun to kind of create a look with um, my magic eraser shade chai my neutral number so these are twos my neutral most neutral would be Riviera and then some color would be Venus and Peppa okay now I say color but this is warm this is cool they're both still pretty neutral they're not like a bright color that I don't think will pair I mean this could still pair with everything else in my palette in my opinion okay now my three shades would be stardust for my most neutral crush for my warm twanda is my <laughs> my chameleon shade i like to put all over everything um technically it's warm i would say and then bright eyes which again is warm but this is one of my faves okay then we're gonna go down here to Fours. So I have Bubba as my four shade, Oak as my four five, and then since I've got nice warm neutral, cool neutral that can also be used as a five, I went ahead and didn't give myself colored shades. I went into a liner. So I tend to line my eyes with Black Friday and then I set it with coal eyeshadow. Anytime I do a more dramatic look, it's not just a daily look that I don't wear eyeshadow, I always use that combination. So I had to have that. And then Trust is my brow color, which is technically a five. Cole is a five as well. But then I gave myself another five. That was, so this is four five. This is a four five. This is Sedona. And this is my Warm that I can also use in my crease. Revival, which is my favorite liner, and also outside corner, and then that fin that can be used in a multitude of ways again. Okay, so I've got some warm, I've got some cool, and I've got a really balanced palette that will give me a load of different options. So here's the question What do I show first? So I'm going to show you really quickly i already kind of showed you this was just bubba so one of my daily looks is just putting bubba all over flipping over all with the eyeshadow brush putting bubba on my lower lash line to halo and then going in here maybe i can try to show you guys and then going in with either brightener to pop it on inner corner and under brow so if I want to do bare minimum that is what I do I carve out my eye and I brighten and you can even skip the brightener and just use your illuminator okay so that's look number one if I want to step it up one notch I can either go into that same brightener with the side of my brush and just use drift a little bit right here on the lid just to kind of add a touch of light and make my eyes look bigger takes one second, right? So you wanna do a little bit more, just grab your finger. This is Riviera, okay? And I'm just going to go to that inner half of my eye, okay? So a little bit more sheen, a little bit more of a completed look, but still a really good look for or daytime, right? These two and three shades can be used in the same way. I feel like both of them can be used all over the lid. The two shades are better for if you just wanted to do that inside brighten, like inside, um, I say inside corner, but this is inside corner, inner third or inner half of the lid because it's going to brighten because these are lighter than these. Does that make sense? So sometimes I'll even use both of them. I'll use a lighter color on the inside and then say I wanna use a darker color on the outer half of my eye 
So let's use, this is bright eyes, and I'm just gonna press it on the outer half of my lid, okay? Doesn't look super yellow or gold to me, but then if you wanted a little bit more Riviera, make sure you can just do a little half and half. So Riviera in the first half, bright eyes on the other half, and you've got a shimmer all over the lid, but you're slightly brighter on that inside, so it's going to open your eyes more. So either two to three shades all over the lid, you can ombre them, you can just pick one, you can pick two, you can pick three. Possibilities are endless, okay. right? I already have my four shade, and I usually do start with that, but you can always go and do that last, and that will kind of help you blend out any shimmers you might've put on the lid, especially because when you're applying, sometimes it can kind of get in that crease and then it will give you texture issues as well. So if you have to go back in, add a little bit more to blend that out, you totally can. Sometimes I will go in, so this was a four, sometimes I go in with a five shade and create depth, okay? So you can do that with a very similar shade, just a little bit darker in where you have the most natural shadow. So if you think about sticking your eyeshadow brush like in the actual eye socket, right? That's where your eye will naturally have the most shadow and should be darker, okay? So if I concentrate that Sedona just right there, it automatically carves out my eye even more. Can you see that? Then you can use Bubba up higher to lift and again, see that color more when your eyes are open. Now, if you wanted to do like I was talking about earlier, um, using two colors really similar and you need maybe more shadow or something cool to really be able to kind of break up that two matchy matchy or two one color, pick the opposite. So if you have two cool colors, Pick something warm and throw it in between. If you have like, what did I show earlier? I think it was Crush Bubba too warm, you would pick. So right now I've got all warm on my eyes, so I would pick cool. So I'm gonna go with Oak, okay? This is the smudge brush. I'm just gonna tap that in there and I'm gonna use this right there on the outer corner. And then I'm just gonna pull that right into that crease. Do you see how much shadow that adds? With very little, it's creating that dimension and it's separating out those warm tones that are on my lid and above my hood, okay? So that's just gonna create shadow that creates more contour, more definition, and make sure that it doesn't look like you have just one color all over the lid. Honestly, with this right here, I feel like I could use any color shimmer on my lid with that nice base of warmth and cool. It's like staple shades, won't look bad with anything, okay? So when in doubt, pull either something warm or cool up over your hood, um, up high enough that you can see it with your eyes open, and then pick the opposite and put it that's darker and put it inside the crease. Does that make sense? And then you can pull either one down on your lower lash line to define your lash line with, again, making it not look too harsh. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five shade on right now. I could continue utilizing that oak and just keep that in the outer corner. And it's gonna look really natural because it's just a nice gray neutral shade. It's going to give me a lot of depth and it's really going to make my eyes look bigger because it is just shadow looking. Um, if I wanted to switch it up and use a color, I can totally just start putting Revival in that outside corner instead, or I can just use it as a liner. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you what it would look like. I'm going to use Black Friday eyeliner, which is our cream liner. Now I'll be honest, I never recommend using this liner without setting it. Even if you don't have oily eyelids like I do, this cream liner doesn't set. It's not a waterproof eyeliner. Eyeliners in general, I don't know about you guys, but I've never, even with waterproof eyeliners, had success with them never running or getting transferred to my upper lid 
or um, lasting all day and not just fading away. Maybe it's because my eyes are oily and hooded and aging and all of those things, but I have the, I have no issues as long as I set the eyeliner. So it's just like cream makeup, we set with a powder. Cream eyeliner, we set with a powder, which is our eyeshadow. So I'm going to go ahead and use the line brush and just press Black Friday on along the lash line and then set it with that beautiful Revival plum color. Okay, so you probably can't see it on camera, but I love this Revival color so much because it kind of tones down the harshness of black and I'm not a big, I mean, I wear black eyeliner all the time. I love the depth it gives, but it kind of just tones it down, makes it look a little bit more natural and it's more fun than brown. So that's my fight. So I'm just gonna finish off with a little lower lash mascara and there's the finished look. Can you tell the difference of how much bigger and open my eye is versus this side. Um, I showed you how we did technically use every category, but I showed you how you could build it up. So if you're gonna wear one shade, I recommend grabbing that four shade, that contour shade, whatever, it, whatever is your favorite, warm or cool, contour out your eye and either call it good or add a brightener. If you want to step it up one more notch, use your finger, swipe on a little shimmer shadow on your lid, and you're golden. Then if you want to take it to date night, then you can add a little bit more shadow and dimension in that outer corner and even line your eyes. That's it. That's all I did. And that is how I do any kind of eye look with this basic method. It's just five, okay? And that way you have some versatility. You have some dark shades. You have different shades you can use for a liner. You've got plenty of options for your lid and you can do an endless amount of looks with, granted, this is a lot. This is 18, well, one eyeliner, more or less 18 shades because this takes up two spots because this holds 20. So if you want to get started, I would say pick two from every category. Even that you don't necessarily need as long as you have um, a good universal brightener for any eye look, a good universal number four shade for that contouring out your eye. And then you can have fun with maybe one darker color for your outer corner. If you wanna add more of those fun shimmer lid shades, then you have a little bit more versatility. But if you wanna be able to mix and match and make a variety of looks, I'd recommend two of every kind. So that will give you the most versatility in your palette and your the most options because Guys, we have a lot of options. We do. I know it's overwhelming. That's what I'm here for. I can help you pick out your perfect shades. If you need recommendations, I would say, first of all, get those neutrals in your palette and then what are you drawn to? It doesn't necessarily have to be what's going to pop your eyes. It's gonna be what you feel like you are confident wearing and that looks good on you. Not necessarily the color that might be the most beautiful looking online or in the palette, but what will you actually wear? What will you get the most use of? And what can be used with a variety of other tones and shades? And that usually tends to go with either you're drawn to cool, cool tones like purples, or you're drawn to more warm shades like burgundies and undertones. You can put yourself in one of those two categories or do what I do and pick a few of each. You're gonna have the best well-rounded looks and the most options in my opinion, but I get some people just have preferences that don't want cool, all cool or all warm, like any cool or any warm. And they just, like I, if I had to pick, I would pick all warm all day. But before I became an artist, I wore nothing but purples. So, because I was like, oh, well, that's what my eye color is. Just because I have hazel eyes, they say wear purple. Yeah, does it look good? Yeah, but is it what I wanna wear on a daily basis? Not necessarily. I like colors like this, and this is what I'm drawn to. And I find that when I do my eyeshadow with those colors, 
I love those looks the best. So do what makes you happy, not what all the makeup artists say do. Um, pick some great neutrals as your staples and then have fun with the rest. And I promise you will love any eye look you do. All right, I will shut up. That was long enough for today. If you need help with your 3D makeup or if you need eyeshadow advice, feel free to comment below, reach out to me any, anytime. My email address is sarah at thecontouredchemist.com and if you couldn't screenshot all those graphics in time, I totally get it. I am working on eyeshadow email as a reference that you can request so that all of my eyeshadow videos, my categories, my graphics, and all of my kind of tutorials within Saint Eyeshadows is in one spot. So if it's ready by the time this video is out, I will link it below. If it's not, it's in progress. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, you will get it as soon as it's released. The request is in the link in the drop box below the video. If you ever need help with your 3D or Demi Foundation, I'm more than happy to help. I hope that was helpful in eyeshadows. I'm gonna go finish my other eye and I'll see you guys next week. Love you.